All right, we are preheating our oven at 400 degrees, my friends, because we are going to start our first side dish, and this one is going to be a casserole. And what kind of casserole? We're gonna use this butternut squash and a little bit of that cauliflower, well, actually that whole cauliflower head, because honey, sweet potato casserole is going down today. Not only are we gonna have sweet potato casserole, but we're gonna have some other good fixings. So, Let's continue on with our Thanksgiving feast and we are going to do some side dishes. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to peel it and we're going to dice it up and we're going to cut these into florets and we're gonna lay a little parchment paper down on our um, cookie sheet here and we're going to roast our vegetables because it's about to go down. Thanksgiving 2019 keto style, honey. Who's here for it? All right, let's start slicing and dicing. Here is our butternut squash here um how i've done it so you're going to cut off the top here there is going to be some seeds in here so we're going to slice this down the middle obviously didn't do that so you see there's some seeds in here we're going to take them seeds out i'm just going to have a little bowl to collect them So butternut um, squash roasted is actually decadent like um, sweet potatoes, so it's a pretty good substitute. So you guys won't be disappointed, I promise. Next thing is, is uh, just peeling them. So you are gonna wanna peel this top layer of skin. It's kind of tricky because they are curved, so just take your time, don't hurt yourself. So, just to clean up. I have a little garbage bowl right here that I'm just kind of collecting all my scraps. Okay. So then what we'll do is just dice these up, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut all these things up, peel them, and get them nice and diced, and then we'll work on the um, cauliflower next. But don't forget we have two of these bad boys, okay? So all right, let's keep this party going. Okay, so I am. I have everything all cut up and they are on two baking sheets. Um, I didn't have one big enough to fit everything. So it's okay if you wanted to divide them. If you had a big bowl, you could actually do this next step in the mixing bowl, but um, I don't have a bowl big enough for everything. So what I have right here is about three tablespoons of Kerrygold butter melted, and I'm going to just drizzle it across um, the veggies here. You gotta make a little bit more, make a little bit more, don't worry about it. You just wanna make sure everything's nice and coated. So we're gonna do the same thing for both sides. We're gonna take some cinnamon and give it a nice coat. Again, we're doing this for the cauliflower and the um, butternut squash. So give everything a nice coat. And then we're going to take some garlic salt here and we're going to sprinkle that. And then we're gonna take some black pepper and then I'm just going to you know, let's switch this out so you can see closer. so you can see everything's nice and coated right and that it looks just like you would think a pumpkin pie would look or a um, sweet potato would look too and then I'm just gonna kind of mix them up a little bit to make sure every it's nice and coated here is how it is going to look we're going to do the same thing to these heads of to these little florets of cauliflower, and then we're going to put these into our oven for about 35, 40 minutes so they can get nice and roasted and cook up for us. Okay, so let me do the cauliflower, and then we'll put everything in the oven. Okay, so these are going into the oven for about 35, 40 minutes to get nice and roasted and soft, and then we will pull them out and start step two. So, all right, set your timers, 35, 40 minutes, friends. All right, so I got some chopped pecans. I'm gonna take a half a cup of them. And I'm going to dump them in my food processor. And we are going to crumble them up until they make like a dusting. If there's a few chunks left, that's okay. Don't over grind them because you'll make like peanut butter or pecan butter. So, so I'll show you what it looks like. Just kind of like a dusting, okay? So then I'm going to pour them in this dish. All right, 
So the rest of these, we're gonna take one and a half cups of these, which I'm pretty sure is the whole thing. We're gonna take two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm just gonna kind of mix up that little chunk that was left. We're gonna put that in here. This is gonna be the topping for our sweet potato casserole, okay? I'm just gonna kind of mix, because we're gonna want it to get a little crumbly, okay? We're gonna add some seasoning to this as well, but I just wanted to, while the butter was still nice and warm, I wanted to mix everything. You see how it's kind of becoming a crumble? That's what we want. This is where you, you get that homemade love at. Where they're like, oh, this is fresh, this is good. Even if you weren't keto and you wanted to just make this crumble for the top of it, that would be really, really tasty. Next up is we're going to take eight little packets of these whole herb sweeteners. Um, this is the one I have on hand. You can use a third of a cup of your other, if you have a different sweetener at home, you can use a third of a cup of that one. So we're gonna break these up and then I'm gonna mix them and then we're gonna add a couple more seasonings too. Next up is our uh, ground cinnamon and we're gonna use one teaspoon of that. And we're going to use one eighth of a taste of a teaspoon of the garlic salt. So just a little. So here is our pecan topping. Guys, this looks freaking good. If you had Lolly's um, granola, you could have probably done that as well. Um, if you wanted to skip this step, but I like it homemade. Like I said, I'm all about, you know, giving that extra bit of love into these Thanksgiving meals this year. So I really appreciate, and I know my family's really been digging it too. So we're going to let this sit and we're going to wait for our vegetables to be done. But this is our topping. Mm, let's try a little piece of that. Oh, damn. Hell yeah. That's good. Oh, this is real good. I should not have done that. Okay, this is delicious. Stay away from this, note to self. Okay, so the deal is with these is you're gonna wanna make sure you could just kind of slice your knife to them so they're nice and soft. That's how you know they're done. So the, the squash is already finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're actually going to use our little food processor. I have a mini one. I've had this since I got married. Never updated it. I think I might get a bigger one this year. Maybe I'll tell Santa. Santa Santa's gonna buy me a new kitchen all the new kitchen appliances. But anyways, I'm gonna start, um, like, what do you, what would you say? Food process, chopping, grinding, processing it up? I don't know, whatever. Um, so it becomes kind of a, I don't wanna say mush, but you know, like mashed, mashed. So, um, and then we got a, probably another seven or eight minutes left on the cauliflower, and then I will do those as well. But this is gonna take me a couple times, um, just because this is like, this is really small, so. I love this thing though. Like I said, me and Leo have been married for like, I don't even know how many years. I lied now. 10 years. And um, I've had it since then and it's done right by me so far. So let's try to get this together. This smells, by the way, like legit, like, punk it almost smells like pumpkin pie to me. Like real sweet, like pumpkin. Also guys, I really suggest you use the Curie's butter for these recipes because you really, I mean, you're taking all this time and making these homemade foods. You really want to use pretty good quality products. And you know I'm cheap. And if I'm telling you to use it, you should probably go ahead and use it. But all right, so I'm going to, so until it becomes like this consistency, let me get me a little, let me show you. Yeah, like a mashed potato, okay? Look at that. I'm gonna try a little bit. Oh my God, that's so good. Damn. That is, that is freaking good. That is real good. Okay, let me finish this up and we're gonna put, I have, guys, I have this um, casserole dish that I'm going to put the whole mixture in, okay? Um, we still have a couple more ingredients to actually add to it, so um, we're not there just yet, but we're getting close. So this one's a lot quicker than you would think. Um, but yeah, so let me finish grinding up all this stuff and then we will mix everything and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so I'm on the last of the actual cauliflower and 
even Leo was pleasantly surprised at how good this tastes. Um, the cauliflower is going to almost be like a really thin rice cauliflower. It's not going to get as pureed, but once you mix it in, it comes out really good. So it just takes a little bit. Um, so you can kind of see on here kind of the consistency in which it is. But once you mix it in with that puree of the um, squash, perfection, guys. Perfection. Oh, bang there. So here is the grounded up uh, rice cauliflower. And I just kind of spin it all out. Get it all out of here. Then I'm going to just kind of give everything a stir. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take two tablespoons of butter. And we're going to mix that in here. And we're going to take two more packets of the whole earth sweetener and we're going to drop those in here as well just mix them in you know with uh sweet potatoes they're real buttery and decadent so like sweet and savory i guess is what they call it i don't know are you impressed is that what that is? Yeah, I mixed it up. So I brought a chunk of the um, roasted uh, butternut squash to Leo right now and let him try it. And he was like, oh my God, it was so good. So he's walking around the kitchen, if you didn't hear him behind me, looking for more of it. Okay, looking good. Yes. Danielle's changing the Thanksgiving keto game. All right. So, uh... Let me get a paper towel and clean that up. Here is the um, grounded up pecans and then the pecan halves with the butter and the um, seasonings. And we're going to top it, okay? Leo, you need to just come take a look at this real quick because they ain't never seen no Thanksgiving like this done before. So here is our topping, that homemade pecan, almost like a granola, honestly. Chopped pecans and a puree like pecan with our own crispy crunch hell yes this is going to go into the oven at 400 degrees what well, we've been having it on for about 20 minutes until this gets crispy and brown mm. let's just virtual high five that okay but here we go into the oven it goes oh my god that smells so good here is our delit you can see everything is nice and crispy nice and golden Ooh, this is looking so dang good all right i'm gonna get a spoon and we're gonna dig into this so you guys you can hear it's nice and crispy so if you dig your spoon in oh look at that oh snap look at that yes all right, I'm going to plate a little bit of this up, and me and Leo are going to dive into it. Let's see how this came out. It's like sweet and savory. Okay, <laughs> that's like your second, and you're going in for number three. Is it good? Mm-hmm. What does it taste like? It tastes like sweet potatoes. But that crust is, the, right? Yeah. Really good. Okay. Well, there you go. And look, you could see, like, do you taste the cauliflower in there? Hmm? You know there's cauliflower in there? Ew! What the heck? I did not know that. You didn't know? No. Did I ruin it for you? A little bit. <laughs> all the kids and the cauliflower. But all right, there you go. That is a winner. So I will leave this recipe linked down below, but you guys can still have your sweet potato casserole this Thanksgiving. So let's finish working on our stuffing. While we're waiting for our um, sweet potato casserole to get done, I wanted to start start working on our next side, which is going to be homemade stuffing. Yes, I found my recipe. We're bringing it back. We're making the same exact one we made last year, which is pure perfection, but we're going to put a little extra love in it, and we're going to sift the almond flour 
and the coconut i'm sorry the almond flour and coconut flour um just because i really feel like they make a world of difference so i'm going to take two and a half cups of almond flour if you guys can see that's my dog in the background here's some almond flour so two and a half cups And then next I'm going to take one fourth of a cup of coconut flour. I know this sifting does take a little extra time guys, but I really feel like it makes all the difference in the consistency of the dough. So just go ahead and take your time and do that. So, all right, we still have to wait for our uh, sweet potato casserole to be done, but these are some of the things I do just to save time. So I went ahead and sifted everything together. I also have um, a whole onion and one cup of celery cut up. So all this little food prep things that kind of take up some time will, while you're waiting for your other stuff are done. So we can just get on to the next thing. So that's a little tip on how to be like super efficient for your holiday season. But all right, um, we got about four minutes, so let's go check on our sweet potato casserole. Okay, now we are on to our stuffing. First things first is we're actually going to make a um, our own loaf of bread, and then we're going to turn that into stuffing, okay? So it's going to be a little bit more than just, you know, stovetop, but it's going to taste a hell of a lot better. So I have right here a brick of eight ounces of softened cream cheese and eight ounces, like a half a cup of Kiri's butter, and we are going to mix it. So we get it all mixed up together. I probably should have put this in a deeper bowl, but we're gonna see if we can make this. So there it is, nice and whipped together. We are going to add in some seasoning now. We are going to do one tisp, one teaspoon of rosemary Clooney. I'm just joking, just rosemary. We're gonna leave the Clooney at home. One teaspoon of sage, I love that name. You know. And we're going to do two tablespoons of the parsley. Ooh, it's already smelling like Thanksgiving over here. All right, so we're going to whip this together until it's fully combined. Eight, eight, not seven, but eight <laughs> whole eggs, but they are at room temperature, okay? Um, definitely should have added a, put this in a bigger bowl, but we'll see if we can make it work. So <laughs> okay so now that we have everything all mixed up right here i'm actually going to add this to my powders and then i'm going to mix this in initially and then we're going to add some baking powder as well okay so let's just add a little bit at a time i think it's a little bit at a time okay and here is our final bit next thing before we keep mixing everything up we're going to take some baking soda we're going to take one and a half teaspoons of it and we're just going to drop it in there there's one and that's about a half that is the aluminum free double rising one i don't know if it makes a difference but that's the one I always get because I remember one time someone said that's like the best one all right I think this is looking real good it's nice and thick so I'm gonna try to show you guys a good nice and thick so this is gonna be our dough for our bread we have all of our seasonings in there it smells really good um, lots of butter <laughs> a lot of butter but all right so this is what we're going to do next i'm just kind of going to scrape this and let it all just kind of sit together we have two loaf pans well i have one loaf pan and one like cake pan it doesn't matter um you can do three mini loaf pans or you can do two of these whatever you have um i'm going to go ahead and just spray these down they said to go ahead and use um butter but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to spray them down so they don't stick Okay, so we're just going to smooth out. If I feel like I need to take from one to the other, I'll do that too, but just go ahead and smooth it out. It doesn't matter if it's in this circle one or not, guys, because we're gonna cut it up. These are gonna be our, like our breadcrumbs, so don't worry about 
the ridic ridiculousness of Danielle's cake pan she's using for bread because that's how we roll. Okay, that's how Danielle do. That's how I do it. All right, so that one's done. This is very tacky too, guys. So just do the best you can. So here is our bread. Here we're gonna throw. Dang, I'm gonna throw it in the oven at 350 degrees for 35 minutes. So yeah, um, 350, 35 minutes, and then it should be about like golden brown. Make sure that you stick like a toothpick through these and it comes out clean, just like you would do anything you bake, okay? You don't want anything to be raw because you're gonna get sick and that's just gross serving raw bread. We don't wanna be embarrassed. Okay, so um, into the oven at 350 degrees for 35 minutes or until you stick like a toothpick or whatever it is in and it comes out clean. Make sure the bread's cooked all the way, okay? So here we go, into the oven it goes. So while our um, bread is cooking, I'm gonna start browning up this uh, sausage. This is just some pork um, breakfast sausage. I absolutely love to use this with my stuffing. I think it gives it a really great taste. So I'm going to brown up, I think one package. Yeah, I'm going to um, brown up one package of this. I think this is one pound. Pretty sure it's just one pound. I don't know. Whatever. Bob Evans. Be careful. Um, like the Tennessee Pride one that has carbs in it. The Bob Evans doesn't. The Walmart brand has carbs in it. I don't believe the Aldi brand has carbs in it. So, yeah. I got the Bob Evans. One little um, log, I guess. And we're going to brown that up while everything's cooking up, okay? Okay, so here is, this is one of the loaves. It's fresh out of the oven. I'm going to dice this up into squares and we're going to roast it in, um, and we're gonna get it like crispy in a, uh, a roast, like a baking sheet. Um, but the other one was not done all the way, so that one's still going a little bit longer because I you know, put the little thing in it and it still had some, un, the dough wasn't cooked up. So um, Leo and my dad tried a piece of the bread and they liked it. So I'm gonna finish cutting this up and then we'll put it on a sheet and get it back in the oven. Okay, so I have everything cut up on a, you know, just little squares, um, on some parchment paper and a baking dish. I have the oven still going at 350. So we're gonna put these back into the oven. We're gonna let them roast for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Let them get a little crispy, and then we'll get everything together. So we're almost done. This is the the bread portion is the more consuming of the time, but you'll really get a better flavor, okay guys? I promise, I promise. There's nothing better than a good home cooked meal, okay? So, and then right here we have our breakfast sausage, so that's already done, and we can start on our um, sauce too right now. So let me get all that together and we'll start on that. Okay, so in our frying pan that we just cooked up all of our meat, I just took some chunks out. There's still a little grease left in there. Um, I just put our pork sausage in a pan. Um, so there's a little grease left from the pork sausage. That's going to give us a little good, um, a really good flavor as well. And this has two tablespoons of Carrie's butter in there. We're going to melt that down and we're going to cook up our veggies, okay? Okay, so I'm going to drop in about a cup of celery and an onion. We're going to drop those in there. We're going to season them with some salt. This is just some sea salt. This is some black pepper. And I had to look for, we ran out of the other parsley and a little bit of parsley. So our, once our breadcrumbs are done, they're gonna actually get tossed in here. I'm thinking this isn't gonna be big enough. They say a frying pan but I remember I did it in a Dutch oven. So I think I might, or like a stock pot, I think I might do it like that too. We'll see, I don't know. But we're gonna cook everything down. Yeah, I'm gonna fry these up in here and then we're gonna transfer everything to a like stock pot because um, I have a feeling, cause I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll make it crispy. No, maybe I should just follow. So we're still gonna add a little bit more butter to this as well because the butter is gonna help cook down the um, bread too when they're ready. Okay, so these have cooked up for about five minutes. 
I'm going to add another four tablespoons of butter to that mix. I'm also going to add, they asked for turkey um, stock or turkey bone broth. I couldn't find that. And any of the turkey bone broth or the chicken bone broth I found had carbs. So this is the organic chicken broth and this has zero carbs, zero fat, um, less than one protein. So um, I'm gonna put two cups of that in here, okay? Because I still gotta put all that bread in here and everything. I don't care what their instructions say. <laughs> That's not gonna work. And I'm not jacking up my kitchen. Has all the veggies in there. Two cups of um, the chicken broth. It has about like six or four or six tablespoons of butter, salt, pepper, and parsley, okay? We're gonna let that get real hot. Let's check on our breadcrumbs really quickly. Those are almost finished, so we are getting there. All right, before I add in the breadcrumbs. I'm going to toss this meat back in here and make sure I get their grease too because I think it gives a good flavor. Mix that in here. Make sure whatever saucepan you use, you have a top for it. All right. So here is our breadcrumb here. You can see and it's nice and crispy. So you're gonna start tossing these in to your um, broth on the stove, okay? Okay. So this is the first batch, so you just kind of, you don't want to mush it in there, but just kind of mix everything, okay? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You could see like all the bread in there, absolutely. So what we're going to do is put the lid on our stuffing and we're going to turn off the burner. And we're going to let all the um, bread and everything absorb. And the top may not get um, wet, but it's going to have like that crust. You know how some stuffings have like um, a nice crust to the top layer of it. So that's kind of what I wanted. So we're going to go ahead, let this sit for a few, and then we'll serve it up in a moment. All right, my friends, here is our pot of stuffing. You can see that they still have some formation, so it's not just like a big ball of what was bread you know what i mean so it's not like a big mush plate and you could see the sausage the onion the celery in there it smells so good i mean it's legit gonna be so freaking good i'm gonna plate a little bit up and we're gonna have leo try it and we'll see what he thinks he's loving this right now we need to get leo back in the kitchen okay Ooh, look at how nice and fluffy it is it's not mushy or anything and you could still see like I said nice nice and hot but it's like everywhere too you don't have to worry about it turning into like a slop at the bottom like everything is nicely done nice and fluffy I really believe it's that sifting of the flowers that gives it helps with the dough guys it takes a little extra time but so worth it but all right I'm going to give you a little bit here so that's everything's homemade I have been Benny. You got some bread. It kept falling when I was putting it in, so he had like three or four pieces. Oh, that's good. What do you do you think like my stuffing stove top? Pretty good. It's up there. It's up there? Mm -hmm. What do you we got some nice crunchy pieces in here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That I thought that was really good, like how we got it nice and crispy. You know how like some stuffing's like a slop almost because it's real mushy? Yeah, like almost like Turns like into a soup almost. Yeah, and this one, really yeah. Out. Would you, so if you weren't keto, would you still eat this? Yeah, I would. Yeah, it tastes real good, huh? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So there you go, guys. Winner number two. We got some stuffing mm -hmm. to go with our turkey, to go with our sweet potato casserole. We're in it to win it. All right, we are on to our last 
side. We're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. And what we are going to make is, what we are going to make is some dinner rolls. Just some plain old dinner rolls. We're gonna use some fathead dough to make them. And yeah, so we are going to go ahead and sift some more um, almond flour, coconut flour, and a little bit of baking powder. And yes, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start that. And this is gonna be real easy. Um, you're gonna need a baking sheet and some parchment paper. And yeah, so quick and simple, this last one here, my friends, quick and simple. All right, one and a half cups of almond flour. Hey babe, mm. do me a favor. Ooh, I lied. It's one and a third cup. We'll just take a little bit of that off the top. We're gonna take some coconut flour two tablespoons of that. And then lastly, one and a half tablespoons of this um, baking powder. This is the aluminum free double rising one. I'm just gonna whisk together all of these powders here, make sure everything is. So we're going to take one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese and we're gonna put them in a bowl, like a microwavable bowl, okay? And then we're also going to toss in there two ounces of cream cheese. You're gonna to toss this in the microwave for, I don't know, about 30 seconds or so. So um, it'll melt. So into the microwave it goes, just your one and a half cups of cheese and your two ounces of uh, mozzarella. So here's 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds. You just go ahead and you just start mixing everything in. Make sure, and then put it in for another 30 seconds and just keep kind of stirring it to make sure everything is melted together, okay? So however many rounds of 30 seconds you gotta go, that's how many you gotta go. Okay, so they're asking for us to use our food processor for this. We don't have one that's gonna fit all this. I mean, maybe I can try my food processor. Hold on, let's see if we can try it. All right, so next up we have two eggs. We're gonna drop those in here. You're gonna wanna let your cheese cook, uh, cool for a few seconds because if you put them in when the cheese is still hot, it's gonna cook the egg and that's gonna be real gross. So we're gonna mix our egg up in there. This is just basically a big ball of melted cheese. Got my food processor right here, my little mini. Definitely wishing I would've got a big one now. Just saying, making a mess. Hell yes, just the way I like it. Never made these before. We're gonna add a little bit at a time. Let's throw this bad boy on. Before we burn out the motor on that thing, we just gotta go ahead. I'm gonna take my towel, clean up my mess. All right, we're gonna take our dough and we're gonna roll it out. And we're gonna make little, little balls with They're gonna, I'm just seriously, I'm gonna make some little dough balls. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need a bigger, if I ever make these again, I'm definitely gonna have to have a bigger food processor. Or maybe try to blend them by hand or something, I don't know. Or blend, you know, like blend them with a hand mixer or something. Because this dough is really, really thick. All right, let me wash my hands. Okay, so right here I just have a whipped up egg and I'm going to use a little brush and I'm gonna go over each little roll here and just give them a nice egg bath so they have a nice crisp to them, okay? All right, so these are gonna go into the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes until they start to give golden brown and rise. So I will see y'all in a minute. I'm gonna come clean up this mess. All right, here are our dinner rolls. They are hot as hell, but nice and brown. Very, very, you guys can see, they are nice and fluffy. So yeah, perfect for your Thanksgiving dinner. Leo's gonna um, put a little butter on it and like mm -hmm. bite into it. Real good. Yeah. <laughs> One, you're moving. Oh yes, that looks delicious. It's real good, mm -hmm. yeah. Recommend these for sure. Oh yeah, these are good. All right guys, definitely, Leo says these ones are really good. So perfect, so we got two sides. We got our sweet potato casserole, our stuffing, 
and then now we got rolls to go with our dinner stay tuned for the end of this week and i'll have a couple more sides to wrap up our whole thanksgiving menu hopefully this has given you guys some ideas definitely trying to get these videos done and out of the way so you guys can plan your menu and do your shopping this weekend so you can avoid all the crowds and really just enjoy your holiday i'm so thankful to be able to you know have you guys in my life and just do all these things so thank you guys so very much for being here and i will see y'all on the next one so don't forget i'll leave all the recipes down below love you guys see you later